Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. You know, we've been getting a lot of questions from people about the validity of using a pistol caliber carbine for home defense. So we're going to try to kind of shed a little bit of light on the subject and to do it, we've got a really awesome new tool we're going to be using. This is a Spikes Recluse. This is an integral suppressed nine millimeter carbine. They do a Colt, Tower and Glock fed. This particular one is Glock fed. We've got a Black Spider Optics one to four, which is a new optic that's out. So we're going to be kind of uh, showing off a, a very ideal package for a home defense scenario. And we're going to be uh, really taking on some science today, shooting through some drywall, doing some ballistics gel testing, kind of seeing if nine millimeter really has the legs to get out there and do the things that it needs to do in the household. We're going to discuss velocities. This is a really interesting rifle. And the reason we chose it for this video is because no matter what you throw in this thing, because the way it's ported and the way the integral suppression of the recluse is made, Everything is relatively subsonic. We're going to be running a variety of different nines, having a little bit of fun today, and hopefully we're going to answer this question for you guys. We've got a variety of little targets here we're just going to play around with and uh, have some fun. And we got our little angry bird there kind of hanging out. Uh, I've got something special planned for him, but let's just say it involves USA uh, Chemical Supply Company and some Binary X. They're here today hanging out. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Let's do it. And we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. All right, that was a coconut. See how that came apart? That was kind of cool. You know, we never really shot a coconut. They've got that hard rind and that, that was neat. That came apart pretty good for a nine. All right, well, our angry bird didn't blow up. We're gonna try it again though. All right, that was a foul on my part. I put the wrong binary in the bird. Odin came down out of the sky and was very angry he didn't get his thunder. So we're going to make him happy and we're going to redo it. All right. Now, let's go science. All right, guys. We're going to be putting a 9 millimeter through a variety of different scenarios using the Recluse here. The Recluse is a very unique gun in that the velocities of the rounds are going to be greatly lowered by the fact of the way that this barrel is ported. It reduces velocities and it's integral suppress. So we're gonna be running a variety of different scenarios. The first one, we've got a 16 inch FBI 10% gel block with two layers of denim, you know, two sheets of drywall with our insulation in it. And then we've got a simulated scenario of a baby in the other room. So this is a typical home defense scenario. I've got to kill the bad guy, but there's a baby or somebody in another room or you're worried about collateral damage. We're gonna use a 105 grain control fracturing Lehigh here through the little recluse. We're gonna shoot this here. We got a lot of cool things to test. This is our first test of the day. All right, we'll see what happened. All right, so the control fracturing did its job. Uh, this is really nothing new to our channel. We've done testing with uh, some of the Lehigh offerings before. Uh, it always does an excellent job. So of course, it penetrated the denim and the jeans there. We went through 12 and a half inches of ballistic gelatin with the base, the pedals, broke off, did their job. We got a really, really nasty uh, permanent cavity, eh, probably about three inches, four inches into the gel there. Let's pull the base out here and look at it. So what this is, this type of round is one of those examples of when you don't want something to penetrate. So the, the reasons that we're covering this in this video is to show you examples of ammunition that will put you in the right type of scenario of what you're trying to accomplish. So reduce collateral damage, Control fracturing is going to do its job. And of course, the recluse is doing a great little job here. Optics working out just fine. No complaints there. Picked up a little bit of blue jean material that carried all the way through the wound channel, but that's to be expected. Bad guys don't run around naked. All right, so let's change things up. Let's show you a scenario. If you want to pierce through drywall and there's a baddie on the other side, what should you do then? Let's do that. All right, guys, so what we've created now is a situation where we want to go through the drywall and get to the other side and take out the baddie that's hanging out in the other room. Uh, for that task, we're gonna use a 90 grain plus P. Uh, this is a Lehigh Extreme Defense. It's a very nasty little bullet. It's got good penetrating qualities to it. And the way that these cuts on this bullet are made, it makes for some really nice hydraulic uh, cavitation going on and really getting in there and causing some nasty disturbances. Uh, so we're gonna do that out of the recluse here. This is running about 1350 out of the recluse. So here we go. Through the drywall, nothing but net. 
up low. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump it up a little bit. All right, let's have a look, see how nasty that is. All right, so that was a really interesting result. However, I'm not really surprised because I know this particular round is very barrier blind. It penetrates like ball, but because of those cuts, there's no way that that hydraulic effect is not going to occur because those cuts are there to begin with. It's not relying on something expanding to provide it. It's actually made and engineered into the bullet the way this thing is designed. So it makes that air displacement, which causes these really, really nasty cavities to occur. We've got on this one, we're looking at about almost 15 inches of penetration, about 14 and a half to 14 for most of them. The nose of that one bullet's right there at 15. So that's an impressive amount of penetration. Two layers of drywall, insulation, four layers of denim, which my denim walked off, and then uh, a 10% FBI block. So that's a truly barrier blind bullet. And the reason that we're covering it in the way that we are is to show you examples of what some of these different rounds can do and the options that you have available to you. Where a gun like this recluse comes in really handy is I can run everything all the way down to 165 grain subsonic. This is Hush from uh, Freedom Munitions. All right. I want to demonstrate this real quick. We're not going to shoot gel with this, but I want you to hear it. So this is 165 Hush. All right, listen to this. All right, so that's pretty quiet there. Then we got the 115s. Now this gun is neat because it'll take the 115s and reduce the velocity a bit, makes them a lot quieter. So no matter what you throw in this gun, it's gonna quiet it down a good bit. You're gonna lose a little bit of velocity, but it's quiet, so that's kind of a nice thing. So one in the dirt, one on the steel. So see, that's not too bad there. Okay, tell you what we're going to do. Just for consistency's sake, we're going to perform the exact same test. This time, we're just going to use ball ammunition. So I can show you the difference between the way the cavity from this extreme defense looks versus just merely a ball round. Ball rounds really aren't good for self-defense. We're going to show you why. Now, the argument could possibly go, okay, well, ball round is a ball round and getting shot is getting shot. Yes, that's probably true, but this is to show that not all rounds are the same. They're not created equal. So just as a test, we're gonna run some ball ammunition here. This is some factory 115 grain Aguila. Magtech, I'm sorry, and we're gonna run it. All right, there's your ball round. I think that hit exactly where we wanted. Let's go have a look. All right, guys, that was a really interesting result with the ball ammunition. I would pick it out of there, but guess what? The block didn't catch it, it over-penetrated. What happened, the ball round went through the uh, drywall, through the insulation, through four layers of denim. Okay, that's cool, penetrated that. Then it began to tumble. We do see that there's actually pretty, you know, let, let's be fair, okay, there is a pretty good little bit of a wound channel there uh, with the ball ammunition, but that's because the ball ammunition began to destabilize, and that bit of cavitation that you're seeing there is because the round is starting to lose its flight path and it's causing kind of a bigger wound uh, channel as it's going through, and that's the only reason. The round over-penetrated, went off in the blue wander. No telling how far it went, and it did begin to skewer. It, it dropped and went to the right, which is pretty typical. Uh, once a bullet begins to destabilize like that, it is gonna tend to wanna drop to the low and to the right. You gotta think it's a right-hand twist, so if the bullet is spinning to the right, as it drops, it's gonna wanna kinda go to the right. So that's completely normal, that's what we expected there. Science, I love it. Uh, that's a really interesting result. So with ball ammunition, could you defend yourself with it? Sure, of course, ball ammo, it's gonna hurt, be highly unpleasant, you don't wanna get shot, getting shot is getting shot. But we wanted to demonstrate, ball ammo will over-penetrate, so if over-penetration is a concern, definitely you wanna go with some type of a proper carry ammo or something like that. So we're gonna move on and show off uh, some other cool stuff and we're gonna come up with uh, some sillier uh, scenarios to, uh, you know, some fantasy scenarios to go through here. Let's do it. All right, just for fun, we're gonna take the little 65 grainer, which is moving about 1650, and bear in mind, that's out of the recluse. The recluse is lowering the velocity on just about everything that's put through it, so that's moving pretty dang quick, even out of this integral uh, here from Spikes, but we're gonna run them into uh, two um, FBI blocks butted up to each other with four layers of denim, we're just kind of see how much penetration we get out of that little 65 grainer. It's getting down pretty fast, it's moving. Um, so this part of the video, I want you guys to comment below and let us know how many gel blocks you think this is gonna punch through. 
I think it's gonna barely poop out of the end of the 16 inch block and then just maybe dig into the other one. What do you think? We wanna know? All right, here we go. And I'll tell you what, to demonstrate the kind of fast handling characteristics of this gun, I'm just gonna double tap it. I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna punch two as quick as I can. Ready? All right, let's see what we got. Okay, if I were a betting man, which I'm not, I called that right on the cuff. Little 65 went all the way through the 16 inch block of gelatin, barely pooped out the other side. We found it on the table there. Um, so that's a, that's a lightweight bullet. It's gonna possess a very limited amount of carrying energy and a very limited amount of kinetic energy. You're decreasing that weight a good bit. This bullet has its applications though, maybe as a, a, a light, a uh, recoiling bullet for somebody that just doesn't want a whole lot of recoil in their gun, or maybe you're shooting smaller game or something like that. It does have its applications, but it's definitely on the light side for a nine. We just thought that'd be cool to demonstrate. Uh, the cavity that we got in the block is, uh, I, I wouldn't really consider it overly gratuitous, but it, it's definitely gonna leave a mark. Let's put it that way. So that's really cool. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something from this video. We just want to have some fun with some ballistics gel, show you guys some different carry loads, some crazy stuff that Lehigh's putting out. Great bunch of people, by the way. And uh, we want to kind of show off the recluse from Spikes because it's a very new gun. This is not intended to be a review uh, of this gun. We'll probably get one out at a later time to do kind of a full expose on. Uh, but the little gun delivering the goods. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit there. Um, we love doing this kind of stuff. I love what I do and I really appreciate the support. Um, that I get from you guys and everything like that. So let me know uh, what you want to see. You guys have to tell me. So like this video concept was put together because somebody requested this video. So we get a lot of video requests and we try to do the best we can to, you know, teach you guys something and, and try to learn a little bit of something going along ourselves uh, as well. So we really appreciate the support. Thank you for watching today. Um, let us know, is there a favorite carry round that you love that you want us to test uh, out of this gun or other guns? Uh, maybe, maybe we need to do a, just a complete battery of tests on everything that's out there. Maybe we can do that at some point if you want. Uh, so let me know. Uh, is a pistol caliber carbine the ideal home defense gun? I would say probably not ideal, but it, it has its place uh, depending on what you are looking to do. You know, for me, where I live, a shotgun or something like that is probably gonna be optimal for me, but that's just me. Uh, some people might want a nine millimeter carbine because they want the reduced recoil. Something like this recluse is cool because you get a very, very quiet operation regardless of what you stuff down the barrel, be it sub or super. Uh, you got light uh, handling characteristics, which are great. If you use an AR on a regular basis and you want the handling characteristics and ergonomics of an AR, that right there is gonna fit right in line with what you're already used to using. Uh, it's much more controllable than a handgun. I suppose that could be one of the arguments. And like you guys are probably familiar with the perfect pairs video we did, you know, if you have a Glock already and you, you already run a nine millimeter Glock pistol, then having a Glock carbine is a nice way to extend the range of an existing handgun. So take all those factors for what you will. Uh, think of it what you will, but hopefully this uh, glean, you know, help you glean a little bit of information on the subject. Thank you very much for watching today's video. We'll catch you next time.